Here are some of the differences between JDBC versus Hibernate and you'll see why Hibernate is a better alternative compared to JDBC. One is of course the object mapping which we've already talked about. With JDBC we have to do it manually and with Hibernate it will do the same for us. One of the primary strengths of Hibernate is it offers so-called a Hibernate query language. Now if you've worked with database for a bit then you probably know that the syntax of SQL statements vary a little bit depending on the database that you deal with. If you learn Hibernate query language, no matter which database you're using, the statements are going to remain same. So that it would be easier to switch to alternate databases without having to change or without having to introduce a lot of changes in your code. Using JDBC, you sort of have to enter the database specific queries but with Hibernate you can just simply use HQL that would remain common for all the databases because, because Hibernate is actually going to take care of converting this into the database specific SQL statement. And added to that, as I've already mentioned, with Hibernate you would actually interact with the Java objects. So in here in this statement with which we're trying to delete an entry from student, this student in here is actually the name of the class, not the name of the table residing in the relational database. So that's the kind of beauty that Hibernate offers for developers. And all the Java developers would actually feel more comfortable interacting with the Java object rather than the relational database table. And as a byproduct, we have the following advantages with this approach. We can actually get into the notion of polymorphism, inheritance, etc and Hibernate will take care of mapping all these notions with uh, the relational database. We're going to take a look at an example. We have videos dedicated to talk on all these. You'll have to wait until then. And the statements that you write in Hibernate are not case sensitive. For example, I have mix of uppercase and lowercase in here, but still it is valid. But of course, case sensitivity is applicable when you're defining your class name. This is something that we've already talked about. Using HQL, you don't have to worry too much about switching to alternatives. One of the major advantages of using the Hibernate framework is its ability to handle the exceptions. I mean, if you go back here, with JDBC approach, we have to wrap the code around the try-catch block, and then we have to catch the exceptions. That's because these are checked exceptions and and we developers have to take care of dealing with those exceptions. But whereas with Hibernate, Hibernate is actually going to convert those checked exceptions into unchecked exceptions so that we developers don't have to deal with it. So that's going to save a lot of typing, improve the readability of the code, etc. And Hibernate is actually going to incorporate certain mechanisms like caching mechanism to improve the performance thereby it will try its best to keep the database requests at minimal level possible. Also if there was some kind of a database connection which was already existing from previous initialization then Hibernate will try to use that connection instead of creating a brand new connection again and again. So aspects like these would help us improve the overall performance of the application. And Hibernate allows us to write annotations. These are basically JPA annotations. And the advantages associated with annotations are quite obvious. You can get rid of all the XML configuration files. It's also like you're writing code in more natural fashion. You get rid of a lot of mess by using annotations. And finally, one of the greatest strengths of Hibernate is that its ability is that its ability to adapt is, is that its ability to adapt to new changes introduced in the database. For example, with JDBC, if you're trying to add a new column in the database, then you have to go and change the code in here. For instance, in here we have to add another statement to deal with that column. And even in the code that helps in adding an entry into the database, we have to introduce another statement to deal with that new column. Overall, it is we developers who have to take care of those new changes. But whereas with Hibernate, Hibernate will help us get rid of all that burden and it is going to do the job for us. Now we have a host of other benefits 
of Hibernate versus dealing with the database in traditional approach. But I'm not going to list them because, because you're not yet aware of some of the Hibernate concepts and they would not make a lot of sense. Well, we're going to talk about all those concepts in detail. So stay tuned for that. And of course, we can get rid of some of these problems with JDBC as well by introducing new class files, etc. But it would be as good as introducing a brand new framework all on your own. So that's a terrible waste of time. Instead, it would be a wise choice to use a well-matured framework like Hibernate that is specifically tuned to solve your problems. Alright, I think this is a good start. Stay tuned.